everybody. Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm not American. Sorry about my accent, and some, sometimes I miss a word or two. Uh, I'm here to change our minds about authorizations and to show some innovative um, methods and processes that are very uh, uh, fitted to the banking industry. First, let's, uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about authorizations, what it is. It is. You know that in every business transaction, we need to authorize something. So uh, PayShift was created to uh, provide the tools and the environment to do this, just this, just to authorize. Uh, PayShift works with a lot of different segments of authorizations. Uh, let's speak a little bit about the first one, the electronic fund transfers. Uh, every bank and every people here must do electronic fund transfers. In PayShift, we do uh, these EFT transactions to payments at checkout. You know payments at, at checkout, it's when you are buying something, you don't care about what you are buying, you have a shopping card, and you are just paying an amount. You are not buying a specific item. The second one is uh, instant sales. Instant sales, uh, when we talk about this, we are talking about an impulse sale. So uh, you look a prod for a product on the TV, in catalog, or on the internet, and you want to buy it now, okay? The third one is bills. So everybody here, I suppose, pays at least the electricity bill. And uh, the last one is remittance that is needed to, to uh, send money to anybody. The second area we, we cover is access. In banking industry, access is very important. And uh, we will talk about one-time passwords and one-time authorizations. I think everybody knows what is one-time passwords. And uh, one-time authorization is the authorization of one specific transaction. Uh, we will talk a little bit, just a little bit, about data exchange. In many situations, we must exchange data electronically. So uh, with PayShift, you can do auto-fill forms, so you can fill forms automatically. That's it. Uh, you can uh, have a P2P relationship. So we are talking about P2P not using Facebook, not using another social network, but in real life, exchanging virtual business cards and so on. And uh, we, we deal with pulls with or without triggers. You know, pulls, uh, pulls are to uh, choose some option from a list. But uh, we do this, of course, and we do something different. We can uh, have triggers in an in a option, like call me now, like send me info, like I want it now, things like this, okay? And we have other authorizations, like authorizations for generic agreements, for enrollments. Sometimes I want to buy a product, I cannot because it is not available. So I want to be in a list to receive this product as soon as possible, usually for iPhones, the new version of iPhone. And of course, we can, uh, with PayShift, authorize to trigger hardware devices, like uh, open the, the bank door, or things like this. Let's talk a little bit about EFT and access. We just have 30 minutes. I will try to, to uh, explain some problems with e EFT and access, some uh, solutions that PayShift can, can give you. And uh, I want to make very quick demos about PayShift. First about EFT. Uh, I think the, the major EFT method in US and even in, in Brazil, that where I live, it's um, the, cre the credit card. Right now, we have many other methods, and the debit card is growing a lot in, in the US. But uh, cards have one problem. 
they were designed for payments at checkout. When you buy something with your card, you don't care about what you are buying. Okay? And uh, they were originally designed to stores, to buy in one store. Uh, in any other environment, you have uh, a data exposure that you don't like, you have uh, security problems, you have some practical problems, you have some process problems, okay? Uh, regarding improvements, of course, everybody wants to improve the card. Everybody likes cards. I have my cards. I, I use it a lot. But um, even with the improvements, some of them that are very important to the market are not even adopted, like the EMV chip. I suppose uh, you have cards with EMV chip here? Everybody? Okay. Uh, Somebody um, must recall when was the last time you used it, the ship? Somebody in the US? I suppose nobody used it because nobody accepted it. Of course, uh, there is another ship in the horizon, like uh, NFC. What is the last time somebody used NFC here? Nobody? Oh, you. Oh, perfect. Probably in a taxi. Yes? I'm, sure, I'm right. And why is it? The problem is, it's very difficult to implement hardware changes. It uh, doesn't matter if you have the device in your hands. You, probably you have a card with PayPass from MasterCard, but uh, the, the store don't have the, the machine to read the card. So you cannot do, you can do nothing, okay? Uh, let's talk a little bit about access. You know many techniques of uh, uh, one-time authorizations, one-time passwords. OTP, it's the major one right now. Everybody is using o OTP. I suppose uh, everybody here knows the OTP concept. You generate a random password and you use one time, just, just one time. Yeah, but even with OTP, you have some problems. With OTP, you can prove that you are what you're saying. But how can you, you, you are, uh, can be perfectly sure that the, the bank is who is telling? The bank is, is the, not a fake one. There is no answer for this. So, uh, and if I need, who can witness this access? Do you have a third par a neutral party that can witness this today? You don't. Regarding unusual transactions, sometimes you must make a unusual transaction, like to send $100,000 for somebody, or to approve any kind of uh, investment. So in these cases, usually the banks ask for another password. And this just annoys the user. This is not what we intend to do with PayShift. Uh, the, the problem is, uh, how can we be sure that uh, what is being authorized? Who records this? And at the same time, if we are talking about a very unusual, very um, specific transaction, very important transaction, how can we avoid the, the capture of sensitive data at the same moment by hackers? Of course, uh, thinking about this scenario, what PayShift can do to help us about these problems? First one question, uh, who is with uh, a desktop here? Who is carrying a desktop? Somebody? I don't think so. Who is carrying a notebook? More people. Who is carrying a tablet? Uh -huh. And who is carrying a smartphone? Oh, not a problem to use smartphones. Everybody has one at least. 
Some people have more than one. Okay, so the first requirement is to have a smartphone. So uh, you can use Android, iPhone, and soon the Windows Phone 8, if it works, fine, I suppose. We hope so. And uh, of course, you need a free mobile application. So we are talking about a zero dollars application. In addition, you, you can have your personal profile or you can represent in, uh, institutions or entities like a merchant, like a bank. And the, the smartphone, when the application is installed, becomes a gadget, a special gadget, uh, when, uh, where you can do authorizations for anything, OK? Anything you like. We will call this gadget the remote, OK? Just to be easier to talk about. Uh, the system needs some info, additional info, so you can manage authorizations. So you, you must fill your personal info, you must uh, tell your preference regarding security, regarding usage, so you can say, if I am 100 miles from your, my house, it's not me. I don't accept transactions authorized in this case. If I'm talking about transactions from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. It's not me. Okay, so you can program these features. Okay, you program by yourself. And uh, when you want to disclose your personal information, just you can uh, can disclose this information. It's not something automatic, like when you pass your cell phone in an NFC tag, an NFC device, and the, the NFC device reads everything. It's not like this. You disclose by your own discretion. Let's talk about wallets. Everybody has a physical wallet and probably some electronic wallets. Wallets are not new, but in PayShift you have a wallet too, so you can authorize uh, transactions. You can insert money using your debit card. So we are talking about electronic money changing from one place to another. And you uh, can have your bank account to deposit the funds. So if you make money with PayShift, you can deposit the funds in a regular account. Of course, users do not need to use their wallets. They can use like pay shifts just to make authorizations for other issues, but uh, if a pay shift make fees, banks involved will make fees at uh, the same time. At the same time, so uh, in this case, uh, pay shift works v uh, very similarly at, uh, if you compare with cards, with credit cards, with debit cards. Okay, so it's not new. Regarding coverage, pay shift, uh, coverage of, of payments. Pay shift can be used to buy something in your TV without changing the TV and without changing your smartphone. Can be used to buy something from a catalog. Here I have a catalog that I like a lot, that it's SkyMall. Everybody knows SkyMall? So it's very interesting to, to buy something from here. Very interesting, interesting product. But sometimes we are not talking about a catalog. You see, here is Time magazine, and here is a shirt. How can I buy this shirt? PayShift can help me with this? Yes, of course. We will show you in, a min in minutes. And uh, regarding secure, secure access, PayShift implements something different regarding OTP. We uh, have bidirectional OTPs. So after you insert your, your password, your on-time password, uh, the system, uh, the, the, the smartphone presents a sequence of symbols, in this case fruits, we choose fruits, to, uh, to be answered by the site. So, 
uh, if I insert my, my password, the site uh, tells me the counter password. Do you, is, this is clear? I will show you how it works. And uh, PayShift use this process for a, any log on this, its site, of course. And banks, if wants to do the same, it's very, very easy to integrate, and they can use it as software as a service. Uh, regarding OTA, that it's uh, unusual to, to, to say OTA in the, the banking industry, but it's a one-time authorization. You can create symbologies. I will show the symbologies representing authorizations for transactions, okay? Only the target user may approve or not, of course, each transaction after agreeing with the request. This is very interesting because you, at the same time, you, you can choose for the, for the authorization or not, and the pay shift can record the opinion of the final user. Okay, so they can be a neutral third party that witness each approval. Let's talk a little bit about technology. After all, we are at a technology event, I suppose. Not, it's not supposed to talk about regulations, just regulations, and just problems in the financial market. So uh, PayShift encodes each, each request, each message between smartphone and, each, uh, in, and his back office using, um, using low resolution QR codes. So do you know QR codes, everybody? I suppose so. It's a bi-dimensional uh, uh, codes, uh, barcodes. And uh, these symbologies that we call uh, or requests can be accepted or not. Okay, uh, PayShift can handle uh, like uh, an infinite am amount of requests. So don't worry, you can use it as you can. I don't think you will need more than this. Regarding security, we uh, deal with from the uh, smartphone to the PayShift back office, we use a very high level encryption. It's not easy for the smartphone to do this, but today we have very good processors and we have uh, very good algorithms. So we can use AAS-256, I think everybody knows what it is, and ECC-256 to identify the parties. So. I don't think there is another uh, network that supports uh, uh, technology better than this right now. So, and uh, each message exchanged uh, records the GPS location. Okay, so the hackers don't like to be located, don't want to be located. So hackers don't don't want to implement PayShift. I, ho I hope you love the, the idea. Some things about the QR code. Today, you see QR codes everywhere. And usually, they represent a uh, website or a URL, an address in the, in the, in the internet. In our, our case, uh, PayShift codes uh, means nothing to anybody. So you cannot, and you cannot uh, see any information about customers, any information about merchants, any information about banks, and about the transaction. It's just a code, okay? If you read a code from another person, you don't care. If it's not intended to you, don't worry. It means nothing to you, okay? Uh, in th this way, PayShift uh, avoids the data exposure, so you don't need to say nothing about you. The QR codes are just a link to something to authorize. And to finish, 
let's talk a little bit about transaction. Transaction requests are created by someone and approved by another people, another customer. Okay, so there is not nobody is alone in the environment to make a fraud, and everybody is tracked. Okay. About usability, I think uh, everybody has smartphones right now, as we can, uh, we, we as we saw here in the audience, and. Uh, I think everybody has at least one remote control at your home. Do you have remote controls? Nothing strange. And uh, scanning QR codes are very usual nowadays. So it's, it's uh, easy to, to use QR codes. So let's talk about our first demo. First, catalogs. Who like this? I like. Who likes? Somebody else? Yeah, catalogs is, is interesting. At least to, to read when you are at your bathroom. Okay? They are very interesting. Very interesting stuff there. Call center. Who like this? To interact with the call center. To spend 10 minutes with people that somebody speaks English like me, or worst. <laughs> Can you imagine 15 minutes talking with me? It's not easy. And the last question, is the paper interactive? This is a good question. Because, uh, you know, because paper is not interactive, Internet born. You, you, you just need internet because the paper is not interactive. But let's make a correction. The paper was not interactive until today. This is a very simple catalog with three products. As you can see, we have here a bicycle, a popcorn machine, I suppose, and a toaster. And how it works? Some people scan this, this information, and what happens? Oh, what is this? An order arrived. Let's see who made this order. Uh, I have a program here that represents this company. This is uh, Mautomatic, very strange name. And as you can see here, I just received an order from a girl named Marina. OK? I know the last name. And she bought a uh, she lives in Fort Lauderdale, and she bought an electric bike. Hmm. Another order from, from Marina. Again, another order. Please stop, Marina. Give me your cell phone. You are buying too much. OK. As you see, this is, thank you, thank you. Too much for me. Somebody must pay for this. OK, back. Let's do, put here. And so uh, this is uh, very interesting, because uh, uh, can you imagine a company like this Mautomatic, like SkyMau, like uh, the TV retailing? They just put the sign. With this, with PayShift, the user choose to disclose the address to, to pay the item, and that's it. Take maybe 10 seconds, something like that, and not 10 minutes talking with a guy like me. And when we are talking about, um, oh, I think, uh, when we are talking about uh, buying stuff, 
it's very important to remember that call center not just uh, annoys the user, and sometimes the user can sell the, the, the buy, can sell buy, but uh, the call center costs something like $35 an hour. So 10 minutes, we are talking about uh, one sixth, so it's uh, like six dollars, yeah? So the company lose six dollars when you use the call center. So let's, let's continue with my presentation. Uh, now I will talk about OTP and OTA. Uh, we have here a fake bank. Uh, uh, just to, to understand, uh, some transactions here are very slow due to our data center is in Brazil right now. In August, it will work in U the US, so you have very best, uh, very uh, good connections, okay? But of course, this will work in our boot, and uh, if you have time, I ask you to, to see what we can do about OTA. Thank you very much, and I am available for questions. Thank you.